In this part of the bridging, we'll look at solving or factoring and solving quadratics in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c when the value of the or the uh, coefficient, we call it, the number in front of the x squared is not 1. Okay, We've looked at general sorts when we've had x squared plus x minus 12. Right here, the coefficient on the x squared term is just 1. We factor this to x plus 4 and x minus 3. And then, of course, if that was set to 0, we set this to 0 and we could solve by saying x plus 4 is equal to 0. So x would equal negative 4 and x minus 3 equals 0. So x would be 3. So they were our two solutions. What we'll do is now look at the problem of where this is not uh, going to be 1. And I've done some extensive work on that that you can look at on the other videos. So this is just an overview for you. Let's take this one. 3x squared plus 8x plus 4. And we want to write this in the form of uh, two brackets where we've got an x and an x in the front and then some constants on the end. The way I do this is as follows. I multiply the a by the c term. This is in the correct form. ax squared plus bx plus c. a times by c is going to give me 12. 3 times by positive 4 is 12. At this stage, I now put the 3x in the front of each bracket. I want two numbers that multiply to give positive 12 and add to give positive 8. Those two numbers are going to be plus 6 and plus 2. So if you are unsure, 1 times by 12, 2 times by 6, 3 times by 4, and then we're back on ourselves. So these are all the factors of 12. It's going to be positive, so these are either going to be all positive or all negative. I then look across and say to myself, are these in their simplest form? That one is, this one isn't. Common factor of 3 comes outside, and we have x plus 2. And then leave the second bracket as it's in its simplest form. We can simply get rid of that. So what we've got now is 3x plus 2 as one linear factor, x plus 2 as another linear factor. And if you expand this out, you'll get straight back to that right there. Let's do another one. 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. So 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, in my brackets, 5x to begin with. Two numbers that multiply to give negative 10 and add to give 3. So we can have 1 times 10, 2 times by 5. That number's negative, which says one of these has to be negative. And the answer is going to be plus 5 minus 2. I scan across, that one's in its lowest form. This one, I can take the common factor of 5 out. And I've got x plus 1, 5x minus 2. And that can go to give us x plus 1 as a linear factor, and 5x minus 2 as the other linear factor. And now that is factored. Doesn't matter which order you put them in, x plus 1, 5x minus 2, perfectly fine. If you expand that out, you'll get exactly where you want to be. So there we go. I've done, as I said, I've done plenty of videos on extensive use of this, and I'm not suggesting you have to use that method. I find it quite effective, though. Okay. So let's solve now. We've just factored. We will solve. I put these in to jog your memory. x squared minus 9. Now that is the difference of squares. You could simply take the 9 over and solve, but if you're asked to factor first and then solve, x plus 3, x minus 3 is equal to 0. So x is going to equal plus or minus 3. Again, you take that over and square root it. But if you ask to factor it and solve it first, x plus 7, x minus 7. This one, again, difference of squares. What we'd have if we had to factor this is 3x. And then we'd have plus 8 and 3x minus 8. So our solutions would be x is equal to plus or minus 8 thirds. So that's sort of linking the two parts. These are difference of squares. So let's solve one of these problems here. 
Let's take this one right now. Firstly, is it in the correct form? ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. It certainly is. So we've got 4x squared plus x minus 3 is equal to 0. A times by the c. So that's going to give me minus 12. In the front of my brackets, 4x and 4x. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give negative 12 and add to give 1. That's going to be plus 4 minus 3. That's equal to naught. We can see that we can take the 4 out of this one. So we have x plus 1, 4x minus 3. The 4 can disappear. And now we're left with x plus 1 equals 0 or 4x minus 3 equals 0. If x plus 1 equals 0, then x is equal to negative 1. If 4x minus 3 equals 0, then x is going to equal positive 3 quarters. So we're sorted. Um, let's look at this one just here. Uh, 3x squared minus 7x plus 4. Again, we need two numbers, but multiply to give 12. So let's set up our brackets. 3x in the front of both. Two numbers that multiply to give 12 and add to give minus 7. So we can see that these are go both going to be negative. Two negatives make a positive. So it becomes minus 3 and then we're going to have plus 4. This one will factor x minus 1 with a 3 out front. 3x plus 4. Even if you hadn't done that, you can still solve them, even if you don't bring that factor up. If 3x minus 3 equals 0, then 3x equals 3 and x equals 1. So x is equal to 1 or x is equal to negative 4 thirds. So there we go, that's solving as well. So we factored and solved these. Okay, let's now look at this scenario. 8 x squared is equal to 2x plus 15. That is not in the correct form. Let's put it in the correct form. 8x squared minus 2x minus 15 is equal to 0. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So we'll, hopefully it factors. We'll assume that it does. 8x in both. 8 times negative 15 is going to be negative 120. Two numbers that multiply to give uh, 120, negative 120, that add to give minus 2, is going to be plus 10, minus 12. And that's equal to 0. We can take a common factor of 2 out of that one to give us x plus 5. We can take a common factor of 4 out of that one, which will give us 2x. Uh, let's just take that out. Uh, take a common factor of 4 out. Uh, sorry, that should be 4, shouldn't it? I've taken that. Uh, that's going to give us 2x and take the common factor of 4 out minus 3. So let's just check I've done that right. 4x plus 5. 2x minus 3. If you're unsure, just expand it back out. 8x squared minus 12x plus 10x and then minus 15. So that is correct. So 4x plus 5 equals 0. So x is going to equal negative 5 over 4. Or 2x minus 3 equals 0. And x is going to equal positive 3 over 2. So they are your two solutions to the equation. What about this one right here? What we've got here is the following. We've got now, and I'm going to uh, bring all of this over to the left hand side. What we've got, 4 over x plus 1 over x plus 1 is equal to 6 over x. So 4 over x minus, uh, what have we got, minus 6 over x plus 1 over x plus 1 is going to equal 0. Now you could, at this stage, um, look at simply... In fact, we'll go the other way with this. We'll write it the other way around. Okay, I'm going to subtract the 4 over x from both sides, which will leave me now uh, with 2 over x. Now, at this stage, if we simply multiply up... Now, all I've done is subtracted 4 over x from both sides. The scenario that we've got here now is following. All I've got to do is multiply up that way and multiply up that way, and we get x is equal to 2 x plus 1. 
and you can see that that isn't even a quadratic. We've got away with that one. So that is simply uh, another linear equation. So we don't need to focus on that. Don't know why it was tagged on. Now let's look at this scenario. We've got 3x squared plus 6x is equal to 24. That is not in the correct form. So let's get it in ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. You're looking at that hopefully and thinking you can do something with it. You certainly can. Let's take the common factor of 3 out by dividing by 3. That will give me x squared plus taking a common factor of 3 out 2x taking a common factor of 3 out minus 8 is equal to 0 and this will be x plus 4 and x minus 2 equals 0. So we did not have to go through the rigmarole of finding the factors. 3 times by 24 is 72 and you don't really want to be going that high unless it's necessary. So with this one you can split that one, divide that out by 2 and it will make it slightly easier for you. So that's factoring and solving. Sometimes you'll come across where, uh, examples where you simply cannot um, solve with factoring and we have to use a quadratic equation. And whilst the start of A-level is non-calculator, you need to be able to do this, especially if you're doing some of the applied stuff. We'll solve this one right here. Um, in fact, let's... Oh, OK, we'll do this one. That is in the correct form. So ax squared plus bx plus c. So a is going to equal 1. B is going to equal 4. And C, and it's important, is equal to negative 6. What we have is a quadratic equation. It says minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So putting in my values, I'm going to have minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared, which is going to be 16, minus 4 lots of A, which is going to be 1, multiplied by uh, C, which is going to be negative 6. And all of that is over 2A, which is 2. So this is going to give us an answer. And what we'll do, we'll put this through the uh, calculator. So again, it's in the correct form, x squared plus bx plus C. So all we need to do is set this up once. It's going to be negative, and you ideally use this as your negative, negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared, or uh, which is going to be 16, minus 4 lots of a, which is 1, times by c, which is negative 6. And all of that is over 2a, which is going to be just 2. Our first solution, and that's what we call exact form, third form. When we go on to the next video, we'll look at completing the square and leaving answers in the third form. Okay, so doing that now, I'm going to get 1.162, uh, correct to two decimal places, 1.16. And then what I need to do is find my negative value. So in there, swap it over for negative and we get minus 2 minus root 10, which is minus 5.16. So if they are your two solutions, x is equal to uh, 1.16 and x is equal to, so it's all one of those two. So that's using the quadratic equation. So hopefully in this video that all of that stuff is fairly logical, fairly basic, um, and you've seen the majority of it before. Um, they're absolutely essential um, skills that you need to start solving equations. But uh, essentially, if you can master that, you should be okay with most things in terms of quadratics. What we'll do in the next video is look at completing the square and the graphical representation of doing that and solving using a completed square.